Over the past couple of weeks, we were learning about um, the animal kingdom. Um, we're going to start talking about animal, behave animal behaviors this week. So the title from our Studies Weekly newspaper is The Quest for Food. Before we begin, quest means a journey or a trip. So how do animals basically get their food? So let's take a couple looks at the pictures. So if we look at this fixed first picture, we have a spider. Okay, so this will be something that we read about in just a second. I um, am not for sure exactly what this is a picture of, so we will have to find that out from our picture. I do see the word hyenas and scavengers here, so I do believe that that could be a hyena. And this looks like a, um, an animal carcass, which is just something that's dead. Um, and if you come down here, you see a great big blue whale. And I know that because this is the caption. Blue whales are the largest mammal on earth, so their babies are pretty big. Okay, so we'll have to keep reading to find out if this is a baby or if this is a real blue whale. Okay, the um, second title is Avoiding a Predator. Remember, a predator is going after or hunting for its food. Prey is um, what the predator is actually trying to eat. And if we look at these two pictures, we have a skunk and some type of lizard, it looks like. And I see the word gecko here. So this is probably a type of gecko. And if we move on down to the next um, subtopic, it says tools of the trade. And this looks like um, a praying mantis, and he almost blends in. So we may be learning about something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you and um, add some things as we go. There are some sneaky animals that use tricks and cunning traps to get the food they need. Some birds know how to trick other birds out of their food by shouting a loud warning call as if danger were near. The other birds fly away to escape the danger, leaving all the food to the trickster. Most clever. That's kind of like saying to your friends, what's that over there? And then taking a bite of their pizza when they turn their heads to look. Other animals use tricks and traps as well. Ant lions dig traps in the sand and wait hungrily at the bottom. Spiders use sticky webs as snares, but that's not all. One spider called the bolus spider creates a scent that smells just like a female moth. Male moths looking for a date are drawn to the web for lunch. This isn't their idea of a romantic evening. Spiders use webs and other tools to trap their prey. Some animals like hyenas travel in packs as well, but aren't great hunters. Instead, they follow packs of hunters around and eat the leftovers. That's called scavenging. It happens on land and at sea, too. Crabs in the ocean do the same thing, looking for what's left over after the big undersea predators have filled their bellies. Some animals hunt in groups called packs. It's easier for a group of wolves to bring down a fast caribou than for one alone. The packs act like families, right down to dinner time, when they all sit down together to feed on the kill, just like you and your brothers and sisters sitting down together around a pizza. Hyenas are scavengers. They eat animals that are already dead. Vultures also fall into the scavenger category. If you've ever been bitten by a mosquito, you can understand that there are some animals that live mostly on the blood of other animals. And if you think mosquitoes are as bad as it gets, try these bloodsuckers on for their size. There's a blood-sucking bat, actually called the vampire bat. That sucks the blood of cattle standing in the field. Or what about one of the most famous bloodsuckers of all, the leech? This tiny critter looks like a little black slug and just waits in the water patiently until a big animal like a deer, a cow, or even a human comes by for a dip. Then it attaches itself to the animal and calmly sucks up more than eight times the leech's own body weight in blood. All fattened up, the leech plops back into the water and goes to sleep. A meal like that will last about six months. Finding a mate and raising the little ones. So what do you think some female animals look for in a boyfriend? You'd be surprised. 
A male green anole, for example, has part of its neck called the dulip that it displays to get the attention of a female. And then there's the male bowerbird. This chap decorates a nest with shiny things like bottle caps, feathers, colored string, and anything he can find to attract a female. When a female shows up, he does a silly dance and sings a crazy romantic song for her. Cute, huh? Maybe so, but not all animals are so romantic. Female black widow spiders and praying mantises aren't so big on impressing the guys. In fact, they eat their mates. Other animals like deer and bighorn sheep use their horns to fight each other for a mate. The females finally wind up with the biggest and strongest of the guys. Blue whales are the largest mammal on earth, so their babies are pretty big. Avoiding a predator. Animals have all sorts of clever ways to avoid being eaten. Chameleons change colors to blend into the background so that they're impossible to see. The burrowing owl can hiss like a rattlesnake's rattle. Some animals have body parts that confuse predators. Take the hair streak butterfly, for example. It has a tail that looks like a head. It's sure confusing for birds. The snake mimicking caterpillar changes its body shape to look like a scary snake. The desert gecko raises its tail when attacked. When a predator grabs the tail, it breaks right off and the gecko runs. Skunks and some frogs use bad smelling chemicals to keep predators away. Porcupines have sharp quills that jab predators when they try to eat them. Many insects, birds, and fish have bright colors, which startle predators. Predators are cautious with brightly colored animals because those colors sometimes mean poison and danger in nature. We all know what a skunk's defense mechanism is. A gecko can remove its tail when a predator grabs it. Wouldn't that be cool? Tools of the trade. For a long time, people thought that one of the big differences between animals and people was that people could use tools and animals couldn't. But lately, we've seen animals using tools just as people do. Chimps and some birds have been using sticks as tools to fish insects out of holes. Some of those same animals also use rocks as tools to open hard nuts and shells. Tool users look like it.